The mental health services of this state are in danger of stagnating and moving backwards, claims the Mental Health Commission in its latest report. I believe that stagnation has already taken place and we are already at the stage where mental health care is deteriorating. Like much of the vital services which cater for the most vulnerable in our society, the mental health services were given a bit of a tidy up during the Celtic Tiger period. Plans were laid out for reform and improvement, but were not fully delivered, and the funding necessary was never realised. Now that the economic climate is more difficult, the mental health services have fallen victim to the austerity agenda, and so too have the people who depend on these services. According to the most recent report of the Mental Health Commission, 56% of the services are operating under the standards for staffing laid down in regulations. There is a shortage of at least 3,000 staff across the service, with just 9,000 in total employed. This comes after long years of hard work by mental health professionals to reform the system and to bring it more in line with international best practice. Much has changed in the treatment of mental health in Ireland, and it has become easier for people to reach out and seek the care they need. Unfortunately, the ability for the service to respond in kind, given its very limited resources, is a major problem that needs to be addressed. This understaffing, which has been a growing problem over the last few years of austerity, has taken its toll not just on patient care, but the morale of workers, their conditions and their safety in their workplace. The work of a mental health professional, their ability to intervene and to provide care, can often be a matter of life and death. These professionals are faced daily with challenges which, if handled incorrectly, can have far-reaching and tra tragic repercussions, and yet we refuse to ensure that they have adequate support. A mental health service must ensure the best conditions for its workers in order to ensure the best treatment for those suffering with health issues. The recent spikes in suicide and the fact that many of our acute mental health units are operating at or above capacity would certainly indicate that the best environment for treatment is not being provided. I know from my own work with many constituents that there is a serious problem. The system is not adequately resourced to provide the care needed by the number of people who need it. I've dealt with many families who have been very distraught when their loved ones have been discharged early without being admitted for treatment to a mental health service, despite the fact that they present to A&E with injuries inflicted on themselves, either as part of self-harm or a suicide attempt. I believe this is due to the pressures on the system to provide care to so many with so little. The consequences of this situation are dire. It has, in my opinion, undoubtedly led to people who should have been in care, engaging in further self-harm and even ending their lives. Recently, a young man from Finglas was discharged in a clearly unfit state, having made a number of attempts on his, right, his life in the recent past. He was admitted in a very serious condition to the matter and was placed on a ventilator for three days. When he had physically recovered, he was discharged. His mother pleaded with the doctor and staff to have him admitted to the mental health services as he was a danger to himself. He was allowed to sign out and was seen on CCTV leaving the hospital. He went missing for over a week and his body was eventually found in the canal. This man died, I believe, because of a failure in the system. He was there in the hospital. It was clear he was a danger to himself. It was clear his mental state had not improved over his treatment for his injuries. Yet it would seem that there was not sufficient staff to ensure that this case was dealt with properly and he was admitted for treatment under the Mental Health Act as would seem to have been the necessary step. This is one case, but it does seem that in similar situations, doctors have been slow to act on involuntarily admitting people who are a threat to themselves. The Psychiatric Nurses Association at a recent conference outlined that they were aware of a number of cases where people had been discharged or turned away. These people then 
went on to end their lives by suicide. The clinical director in Beaumont resigned recently because of the serious state of the service. Shane O'Neill said he could not stand over significant clinical risks. He was referring to the treatment or failure to treat many severely unwell people at grave risk of suicide or self-harm. Mental health reform in response to his resignation stated that acutely psychotic patients were being left in emergency departments for hours and end. They are not receiving appropriate care there, nor are they in an appropriate environment given their mental state. The distress that has been caused for sufferers and their families being torn away from A and E having attempted suicide is hard to fathom. They can see that their loved ones need immediate care, but because of understaffing and a lack of beds, they are being left to their own devices, and in too many cases, it has led to a tragic ending. Families I have spoken to have tried all avenues to have their loved ones admitted, but the ob obstacles due to the lack of resources again block their way. Some have gone to the Gardaí, but have to, had to wait hours for a doctor who, to, who was on call who may or even may not even sign an order if he was there. There was another two cases recently of young men from Finglas released from the services in Blanchardstown, and only a number of days later, both had ended their lives. Their families had made numerous requests that they not be discharged and that they would be readmitted immediately. This is the tip of the iceberg. No family in our small country has not been touched by suicide and mental illness. Every sector of society is affected, but particularly those already in vulnerable and disadvantaged positions in our society. These are the people who have been the victims of the inequality which is so tightly wound into this state's DNA. They have been failed by the state, and they have been wronged by austerity throughout their lives. And now, when they are on the brink, they are far too often failed again by a system which does not want to resource the services which could have saved their lives. My family is not so different from any other families who have had to deal with the challenges when a loved one is plagued by mental health problems. I know the details of the cases I have mentioned above all too well because I have been in the A&E with a loved one, pleading that they be admitted. I've seen firsthand the obstacles in the way of those who seek to have a family member cared for properly when it is life or death. I know what I have said to be true of the struggles of these families because I have lived with it for the last three years. At one stage, times were very dark, but our family banded together, and with the work of the excellent staff of Conley Hospital, we have come out of those times, and there is hope again. These nurses and doctors succeeded in this case, in spite of the obstacles and challenges to them in their vocation. Their dedication was second to none, but it was an uphill struggle due to the understaffing and inadequate resources they have had to deal with. We have fantastic mental health professionals. We have good strategies, but what we need is the right focus. We need to resource our mental health services, and we need to prioritize suicide prevention. We can turn back the tide, which has undermined the progress of a vision for change. But we must begin now, and we must begin by helping our excellent mental health professionals to do their job. In the past, Minister, citizens were also put into health institutions or into mental health institutions by their families, friends, and state institutions. And some spent years and years, and sometimes their whole lives, in these institutions. In some cases, family members who put them in in the first place died, and they never saw the light of day. This scandal needs to be investigated and is another scandal yet to be real, realised in this state. And I urge you to look at this scandal of people who were put away in some of our mental institutions over the years. I think this is something that should be hitting the radar because it has, has huge implications for, for many families over the years. I commend this motion and ask the government to support it.